algorithms are finicky bastards. And so even if you're subscribed to me, even if you've clicked the bell and gone through all the other rigmarole, even if you follow me on social media, you might not see what I'm up to. So I have a mailing list, postmortem hyphen studios hyphen fan hyphen group, which is a bit of a mouthful, but all you have to do is navigate your way there once at groups.google.com and subscribe. And then once a month, you will get an email with everything that I've done in the previous month. And isn't that special? Hello, lovelies. Today I'm reviewing Zas Akala, which is an RPG, a sort of black metal RPG, as is the fashion at this time, uh, that was sent to me uh, by a viewer and a reader. So it's their game and I got a free copy just to be upfront about that. If you want me to review something of yours, send it to me and I may or may not get around to it. In this case, uh, I did. Eventually, I was sent it quite a while ago. <laughs> So there is this style right now for these extremely grim, dark role-playing games. And, you know, I'm kind of kind of guilty of getting in on that too, uh, with Grimdark. <clears throat> Though mine is a modification for 5th edition rather than a whole new RPG or one of the many old-school renaissance. RPGs that seem to have gone down this this line for for whatever reason obviously Morkborg has had a, a big influence. I think Zas Akala is about as far down the grim dark and horrible sort of line as, as you can go and still really still have a game there. It is very much a game of misery tourism of unrelenting horror and survival and weird eldritch horrors. It's almost like a sort of concept album of, of horribleness by someone like, I don't know, Cancer or Cradle of Filth or something like that. But it's definitely more grotesque and, and hardcore than a lot of the other stuff out there. The whole game has a background that makes sense of everything. And it has a good starting hook in that your character is washed up in this hellish place from some other world, psychically bonded to other people who have been dragged there by these sort of psychic demigods or dark philosopher kings, if you like, that bring people here and then feed off their pain and suffering. So you have an excuse to bring a character in and for that character come, to come from a, a wide variety of potential other worlds and backgrounds and you have a reason for everybody to be together. And this also applies to new characters that may be dragged over by the same sort of psychic overlord as the rest of you. And the game starts out initially very much the same in that you just basically have to survive by whatever grim... <laughs> dark, nasty means necessary. The whole presentation of it, at least regarding the art, very much fits that style. I'm not so sure that the layout of the text fits that style. The content of the text does, but I think the, the layout could do with a bit more tweaking. Of course it's difficult because you can't use a huge amount of black on interior pages it can make things hard to read it can make things difficult or expensive to print or cause problems at that size but something needs to be done to make the text match the art and the content of the text the black metal style art is pretty good i feel like the the artist is like 85 90 percent of the way there to being fully professional in quality on this kind of style so that and I think I think there's a several artists involved but the main artist is the one I'm talking about just another six months a year uh, a little bit more refinement of the style and the whole thing will, will go together much better the text would have been better as, as two column text I think and a font that really brought out the the kind of dark flavor of the whole thing could have worked a lot better a lot of the book is flavor, the system isn't terribly complicated. 
but it's not flavor that you necessarily have to reveal to the players. It's good to have it there in the background, but I think part of the enjoyment of the game would be tracking down the information about the law, why you're here, how you got here, how things ended up as they are, what the, what the whole purpose of the place is, without giving away too much right, right from the start. Um, the problem with unrelentingly grim and dark games is you kind of get blasé to it. It's, you can't maintain that level of shock and disgust. In some ways that's appropriate because a character would, would become inured to it. But when the players become inured to it, it's not necessarily is it as enjoyable. You may start looking for something more and more shocking or horrific or nasty in order to keep that kind of excitement level and that engagement level up which kind of tempts you to cross lines I suppose so I think I, I think I would play this in relatively short sessions and irregularly if I were going to play it as a as a campaign system wise it's it's fairly simple um, there's a lot of random tables if you want to use those or you can just pick things off them and it is really incredibly deadly you have stress which represents your chance of failing when doing something remotely difficult and doom which is your chance of dying in life or death situations so if you were to hurl yourself across a gap in a cavern for example with a precipitous drop below you uh, you would roll whatever you needed to roll to, in order to, to succeed at that if you got below your stress those would be failures and then there's a chance of you dying which would be your, your doom roll in that instance with perhaps just clinging on by your fingernails on the other side or landing on a pile of bodies damage is done separately but doom definitely implies that you will die in life or death situations uh, where you fail and where you fail your doom roll Specialities are interesting. You start with very broad areas of expertise, but not particularly skillful in them. And then as you advance, you get higher scores, but in narrowing levels of expertise. This is something I've been thinking about with my own systems. So to take an example out from Zasikala, something that you might see in another game, you might have firearms, rifle, a particular kind of rifle. Uh, being your narrower areas of expertise. You can choose how much risk you want to take, which increases your chance of, of greater success, but also increases your chance of getting greater stress or failing more spectacularly. You take your highest role plus your speciality rank, as we covered before, and that gives you your result. If you score 10 or more, it's a complete success. If you score over your stress, um, but not over 10, then you get a partial success. If you roll less than your stress, uh, it's a disaster. So you fail, you screw up, <laughs> and you, you probably die. If you roll a 10 without scoring a one on any of your dice, that's a critical success, which allows you to learn a new speciality, which is one rank higher than your original speciality, and more specific, as we covered. To give you another example, you might have Mountains a plus one, uh, a tighter speciality might be um, climbing in mountains up to plus two. You can have up to five specialities narrowing each time at, for a total of plus five. Um, the death rolls against your doom are rolled on a d100. If you run out of stress, you turn psychotic, and as well as your skills and your sort of broad statistics, that they're not really quite statistics. Um, you can also take on aberrant traits like mutations or magical capabilities and so on. And they give you special capabilities and special bonuses. In combat, you get three dice every turn. You spend a dice to move. You spend a dice or more to attack. Uh, damage is um, it's 10 times the dice number you roll plus the weapon score. Uh, it's deadly, but you have to rely on luck to uh, a pretty large expen extent. Um, so weapons just give you an edge 
it's not all or nothing. You can beat someone to death with your bare hands relatively easily, and considering the players are going to be starting out naked, cold, and alone, combat certainly for the first few encounters is going to be incredibly deadly. You can defend yourself, of course, but it's not terribly effective. And then when you're injured, if it's 10 or less, it's just, just cosmetic. If it's 10 to 19, you take a major injury. That's where it starts, <laughs> major injury. 20 to 29 damage is a grievous injury. Uh, 30 to 39 is a mortal injury, and you gain more doom, and you have to make a death roll. And then if you take 40 or more damage in a single hit, you're just killed. <laughs> outright. Um, locations are used to record these wounds. Overall you can take uh, four major wounds, two grievous wounds and one mortal wound. Blood loss is interesting. Now, this is something I've dealt with in other games. Blood in particular where it's a numerical value like hit points that goes down. In this it's not blood loss in that same way. Rather you have a limit on how much blood loss you can cope with. So rather than dealing with a declining value and getting weaker and so on as you lose blood, as you might in a more technical system like blood, um, here you have a limit on how much blood loss, how many cuts, how many bleeding cuts you can have before you keel over and die, and that's 10. Um, bandaging reduces that, uh, cauterizing, reduces that, uh, but you take more injuries, the injuries become permanent. It's an interesting way of dealing with it and thinking that, okay, so you're losing blood but it's not catastrophic until you get to, to 10, and considering how that might create a trail for monsters to follow, that, that sort of thing, that's, a, that's an interesting way of, of dealing with it and one I might pinch, <laughs> to be honest. There are quite extensive settlement rules, so it seems that the idea is that player characters, once they've gotten past basic survival, might settle in, build a settlement, attract other people or creatures uh, to live with them uh, in those settlements. So there's an expectation there of, of settlement which isn't necessarily typical of a lot of RPGs or a lot of player groups tend to prefer the life of the, the wandering murder hobo. But there are several settlements, cities and, and so on detailed as well. So you can travel, but it definitely seems like the idea is then the players will get a lot more enjoyment out of creating some sort of settlement. But given the nature of the world, the scarcity of resources and so on, such a settlement is likely to have to take a rather dark and nasty turn one way or the other in order to be a viable settlement. There's also scattered rules about powerful enemies, psychics, uh, artifacts um, that are created within the world. Um, there's a lot of useful tips on how to play the game and as I stated before there's all these useful inspirational random tables whether for creating characters or encounters or or just about anything else so it's very dark it's very grim it's very nasty if that is if that's your jam then this is going to be a very good game for you presentation could use some work but in terms of substance in terms of content there is plenty here to keep you going for a a long time. In terms of style, I'm going to give it a 3. It would be a 4, because the art is good, but could be slightly better. What really brings it down, I think, is the layout and the the text choices, which jar slightly with, with the rest of it. But in terms of the world descriptions, the the world that's laid out and the darkness and nastiness of it, that's all very evocative. It just needs to be presented a little better to bring it up to a, to a four. In terms of substance, there's plenty here. There's everything you need. There's plenty of room to bring in your own dark imaginings to make the world even worse, <laughs> even nastier. But there's plenty of inspiration here. Lots of random tables for inspiration. 
um, nicely, sufficiently detailed settlements that already exist, and all the background is there to explain everything, pretty much, if you want to delve into that. So substance, I'm going to give it a 4. So it's style 3, substance 4, total 7 out of 10, 3.5 out of 5. Zang. Machinations of the Space Princess is an old-school RPG with a sci-fi setting. The rules are familiar and at once innovative. Opened up so you can play literally any alien species you can envision. Purchase it at RPGNow or Lulu.com.